last time. Service, please. It was baptism by fire in the restaurant takeover. This is absolutely unacceptable. The girls' team took the victory. Oh my God! <laughs> and a French dessert. It's too soft. Spelled au revoir for Dr. Sean. Tonight. Lift. The home cooks get a master class in fine dining. Chef Michael Bonaccini is teaching me how to cook. Incredible. And high drama. Woo! I have to pull off the impossible. Then it's unhappy hour in the kitchen. This challenge is driving me to drink. As they fight to keep their dreams from getting smashed. Do you think this is good enough to take you to the top four? is way tougher than I ever thought. I'm just so proud to be part of the top five. Welcome back, everyone. It's not enough for me just being top five. I want that number one spot. You've all come such a long way. And at this point in the competition, any advantage has tremendous weight. Everybody here is good. They are very good. So winning this mystery box would be absolutely insane. Three, lift those boxes. So far, only me and Matthew have won mystery boxes. The other competitors are really looking at us with serious targets on our backs. One. I just want to win a mystery box once. Two. This could be our last mystery box challenge. This is one I need to win badly. Three, lift. Oh, wow. I see a perfect plate. It's obviously executed by some sort of world-class chef. Wow. The smell is just so good. I just want to dig right into this dish. If you've ever wondered what a world-class dish is like, you're looking at one. A seasonal and savory wild boar entree created by one of this country's finest chefs, Michael Bonaccini. Oh. <laughs> oh, cool. Oh my gosh. I'm getting it for free. That's awesome. Smells good, doesn't it? And I'm sure you want to know what it tastes like. So grab a fork and dig in. Mmm, mm, so juicy, so decadent. I could eat this whole thing. This puree is so smooth, it just melts in your mouth. That's really good. I'm a vegetarian, but even I know that this meat has a perfect sear on it. Now, we want you all to make your own world-class entree. So, you're gonna have to learn how to master a few techniques. The perfect sear, a velvety smooth puree, and restaurant quality plating. And I'm gonna demonstrate those techniques for you right now. Please come up to the front. We're gonna get a demonstration from Chef Michael. It's amazing. A ringside seat. <laughs> mm -hmm. Awesome. This is such a treat. Chef Michael Bonaccini is teaching me how to cook. Incredible. Presentation side goes down first because that's the nice clean pan. If you overheat the pan, you'll have a very leathery crust to the meat. You want to be hot enough to sear it, but not so hot that you end up scorching it or drying it out. Very, very important. We'll finish it off in the oven. All his movements are calculated. Everything has a thought process behind it, and it's just so cool to see him cook. To make the parsnip puree, very simple. In the pot, I have vegetable stock, cream. Once it's cooked, we add to our blender. I have never made a puree before. He makes it look so easy, but I'm aware how hard all these techniques are. Work that through, making sure that there are no lumps, no unpulverized pieces of that beautiful puree. Plating. So the first thing to go down will be the puree, which you can see how smooth that is. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous beluga lentils. There will be a little bit of negative space on either side, but for me, that provides balance. Cut the chop. So now we're exposing the beautiful cook on that meat. Mm -hmm. Food has to look beautiful on a plate from a chef's perspective, but it has to make sense for the guest who has to eat it. I think I'm a good plater already, but after seeing his thought process behind plating, it's life-changing. Everything has a purpose. Done. Now it's time to go back to your stations. That is really, really, really awesome. 
I hope you all paid close attention to Michael because now we want you all to utilize the techniques he just taught you. Perfectly seared meat, beautifully pureed vegetables, and a beautifully composed MasterChef quality plate. And you have just 45 minutes. <sighs> Is everyone ready? Yes, yes chef. chef. Your 45 minutes starts now. Time starts, and I'm going straight for the deck. Ooh, it really needs business. There's no more duck. This is my mystery box. I got this one. Did I see white asparagus? Excuse me. Woo, bean down, bean down. This is top five, and we've seen some incredible cooking. But we want to ratchet this thing up now and see what they really can do. They tasted a world-class dish. They had lessons from the masters. So I'm expecting a lot from these people. I think the ability is there. Hopefully that little demo will move them a little closer to that step. I am making pan-seared duck on top of a celeroc hair puree. Watching Chef Michael cook was so inspiring. I'm not like the other home cooks that are here. They get to go out to these great restaurants all the time, but I'm at home cooking for my family. I've got growing teenage boys. There's not a lot of time to be doing intricate, beautiful plating, so learning how to do that restaurant plating means the world to me. I'm trying to do a dish somewhat similar to uh, Chef Michael's dish. I'm doing a pork rib chop with red lentils and a celery root pear puree. I haven't won any mystery boxes, and I feel like a lot of the home cooks don't see me as a threat. I don't mind being underestimated because I'm ready to blindside everyone else in this competition. The importance of perfect searing is so that you seal in the juices and also so that it presents really well on a plate. I'm making a pan seared duck with a uh, blackberry red wine sauce, fondant potatoes, and uh, caramelized white onion puree. I love mystery box challenges just because I can use my creative mind. If I can serve the judges food that they haven't seen before, I've done my job. Woo. 30 minutes! You have 30 minutes left. I am making a New York strip loin, acorn squash puree, as well as a play on a teriyaki sauce. My advantage is I know what world-class food is. So I spent a lot of time in Japan a couple months ago. I went on a food trip, and I want to bring out those same flavors that I experienced there. Veronica knows so much about food, but Veronica's a busy lawyer. I have a lot more experience in the kitchen. I'm making a seared New York strip loin. I'm going to do a potato and leek puree, and I think it's going to be good. Hi there, Jeremy. Hi, Chef. Wow. It's like you've got a pork chop. Are you following in my footsteps? I, I, I kind of am. Make sure that you make it your own. I think that's important. Yeah. Your plate presentation hasn't quite hit the all-star stage. Do you think this is the dish that's going to do it for you? I'm going to try to do my best to make a beautiful plate for you guys, and hopefully it'll be nice enough for you guys to want to come taste it. Good luck with it. Thank you. Thanks. Matthew. Hi, Chef. I see the inspiration in your eyes. Yeah, seeing Chef Michael today and seeing what he came up with with uh, seasonal ingredients is absolutely inspiring. So what dish did it inspire? At home in Victoria. Uh, we have a lot of duck there, so I'm going to cook duck. Did uh, you clean this duck yourself? Uh, yes, Chef. Interesting. You yeah. always leave the sinew on. Um, um, there's nothing worse than rubbery duck. Good luck. Thank you, Chef. I should have caught that. Start puree. Five minutes. Holy crap. Make sure your meat is resting. Oh, beauty. My duck breast is still in the oven. I'm cutting it really close. Nice. Not bad for a first timer. Two minutes. You have two minutes left. You know, every chef has a unique style of plating. It looks like Jeremy's dream is like a replication challenge. He's doing exactly what you did. Well, I tell you, I don't want to see a direct copy. I'm waiting for the very last second to slice that duck breast. If I don't let my duck rest long enough, it's going to bleed out all over my beautiful puree. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hands up! Oh, my god. Oh, my god. 
it's bleeding out. I just watched the blood pool around my beautiful puree. The judges take one final look before selecting the most promising dishes for tasting. I'm hoping it's a world-class entree. Fingers crossed. My plate looks beautiful and I know it tastes really good, so I really hope I get called up for this one. You all did a stellar job, but there are three dishes that we'd like to get better acquainted with. The first dish that we'd like to call up was made by a home cook who produced one of the most intriguing plates of the night. Please bring your dish to the front. Veronica. I'm so thrilled. I have never made a puree before, so I hope they like it. I have a New York strip loin, and underneath is acorn squash and sweet potato puree. Nicely seasoned steak, it's nicely cooked. The puree is absolutely wonderful when it is that creamy and light and beautifully seasoned. The puree has a wonderful gold background to it, but uh, I do feel it's sort of one step away from being fully complete. Microgreens, that might have done it, just to give it one additional pop of color. Overall, you had a great idea and you pulled most of it off. Thank you, Chef. See on the beef, I think it's perfectly done. It's well seasoned, keep it simple. The puree, absolutely perfect, nice and silky. All the flavors, they all come together. It's almost world class. Thank you, chef. The second dish we like to see was made by a home cook who is no stranger to elegant plating. Please bring your dish forward. Matthew. <laughs> I feel really confident about this dish, and I think it's a winner. So we have a pan-seared duck, fondant potatoes, with a caramelized onion puree. You make me really proud. You have this ability to put food on a plate like a professional. Thank you. Let's give this a taste. Hmm. The duck is delicious, great flavor. The only misstep is the fat is not rendered down properly. You should have cooked that down more. Thank you, Chef. Dish looks like almost like a artist palette. Gorgeous. Let's see how the flavors work together. Intelligent flavors. That onion puree really stands out. Beautiful and smooth, but deep and complex. Well done. Thank you, Chef. I've never felt as confident about a dish in this competition yet. The third and final dish that we'd like to taste was made by Mary. What? It is a steak and potatoes dinner, but I've elevated it. I did a, a seared New York strip loin, a potato and leek puree with a shallot red wine reduction and some of the canor beef stock. The meat, it's pretty rare. Mm -hmm. When I did eat meat, I liked it very pink. It astonishes me that you're able to season meat this well and not taste it. Mm. So the puree is horseradish and potato. And a bit of leek as well. Piece of advice, don't put the potatoes in a blender, ever. Piece of advice, 
don't put the potatoes in a blender, ever. It becomes gummy and starchy, but overall, it's a very solid dish. My brain floated away, and I put potatoes in a blender. Only one home cook mastered all the techniques that Michael showed you. And the dish we're talking about was made by... Matthew. Oh my God. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Congratulations, Matthew. You're about to gain a significant strategic advantage. Please follow us into the pantry. Again, yes! I have to make sure whatever this advantage is, I'm going to use it really, really smartly. Matthew, welcome to the MasterChef Canada Cocktail Lounge. <laughs> awesome. Tonight, Matthew, the pantry is doubling as a bar, and it's all in keeping with the enormous advantages that you're about to receive. Your first big advantage is that you don't have to cook. <laughs> oh, my God. Top four, holy crap. Now, some might say that calls for a drink. Definitely. <laughs> and we're about to show you four. A frothy pina colada. Irish coffee. Mm. A mint julep. And finally, the Bloody Mary. Wow. The signature ingredients of these drinks will inspire what your fellow home cooks will be making tonight. Wow. And you get to assign one of these four cocktails to each of your four competitors. You have some tough decisions to make. Oh, any one of these will be hard for all of them. This is gonna be really, really fun to watch. Today, everyone will be challenged. The judges and Matthew walk in holding cocktails. Were they having a party in the pantry? I have no idea what's going on. Everyone, please join us up in the front. Matthew's really going to make this tough. Don't be falling for that super cute smile of his. He is fierce. In the pantry, we presented Matthew with four classic cocktails each with its own unique flavor profile. A pina colada. An Irish coffee, a mint julep, and a Bloody Mary. Tonight, Matthew will not be cooking. His second advantage is he get to assign one of these cocktails to each one of you. The cocktail that you're assigned will be your inspiration for not just one, but two MasterChef quality dishes. One savory and one sweet. So, Matthew, are there certain home cooks that you plan to give more difficult cocktails to? Uh, yes, definitely. From the very beginning, I thought that Mary and Veronica have been my biggest competition. They're going to definitely get a challenge today. Matthew's totally underestimating me, and my skills just means that I'm going to get him in the end. Who will you assign the pina colada to? A home cook that does not work with tropical flavors that often, they're gonna have a hard time with a pina colada. I'm gonna give this pina colada to April Lee. The key flavors are coconut, pineapple, and rum. Have you ever tasted a pina colada before? I sure have on tropical vacations, but the Master Chef Canada Kitchen is no vacation. Matthew, the Irish coffee, who are you gonna give that to? I'm not quite sure if they even like coffee. Being Filipino myself, I know that we don't cook with coffee that much. This one I am going to give to Jeremy. Jeremy, how do you feel about cooking with whiskey, coffee, and cream? I'm not sure what I would pair coffee with or how to use it at all, so I'm racking my brain right now. Next up, the Bloody Mary. Who's going to get that one? Making tomatoes and hot peppers the star of a dessert is gonna be the toughest challenge here today. So I'm gonna give this one to someone who I see as one of my biggest competitions. So I'm giving the Bloody Mary to Mary. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good fake out. 
I'm not as excited as I look right now. I'm trying to get in Matthew's head because I need to show Matthew that I can handle this. It's obvious who has the mint julep. This one might be the toughest one for both savory and sweet. I do not know very many dishes I can cook with bourbon, sugar, and mint. Have you ever tasted a mint julep? I don't drink, so any drink would be hard for me. Matthew, please head up to the gallery. The rest of you, please return to your stations. Good luck, guys. At your stations, you'll find a tray with all the key ingredients used in your cocktail. You have only 90 minutes to make both dishes. Are you ready? Yes, yes chef. chef. Your 90 minutes starts now. I open the fridge, and the first thing that jumps out to me is steak. I know that people pair steak with coffee, so I'm going to go for it. Shredded coconut. I'm grabbing at things and thinking, coconut, coconut, pineapple, pineapple. Oh. This is going to be a very difficult challenge. The trick is, you have to do both a sweet and a savory. That makes it twice as difficult. We don't grow a lot of pineapples in rural Alberta. We're not really tropical. So that's why I really just have to think outside of the box. I need to be big, bold, and tropical. I'm making a trio of tacos with rum marinated pork and a tropical salsa. My sweet dish is a coconut tart with a pina colada cream. I'm not going home in this elimination challenge because I love it here. I love being here. And I'm not done learning at the Master Chef Canada kitchen. It's starting to taste like a pina colada. Whoa. I think I just got drunk from that. If you're looking for my weak spot, it's definitely cocktails. But I know how to work with mint and sugar. So for my savory dish, I am going to make a beef tataki marinated in bourbon with a zucchini and mint slaw. For my sweet dish, I am going to make a chawamushi. Chawamushi. Chawamushi is a Japanese egg custard that's normally a savory dish. Lid on. But I'm going to make it sweet by adding a bourbon sugar syrup on top. There we go. See, my three ingredients are tomatoes, chili peppers, and vodka. I'm gonna do a pasta puttanesca with some pancetta and some vodka in there just to bring out the yummy flavors in the tomato. I love taking a ton of ingredients and making them into one delicious plate. And that's what puttanesca is. Should be easy peasy, but making a Bloody Mary sweet is really tricky. Claudia, what would you do with Bloody Mary? You know, let's not forget that tomatoes are actually fruits, right? I would do a beautiful tomato tart. I would caramelize it. For me, I actually do a dish where I pickle the tomato in pachan vinegar, which is very, very sweet Chinese dark vinegar, and I eat it with ginger parfait. Beautiful dish. The home cook who hasn't had the worldly experience the chefs like you have had, I would think they would be scratching their heads saying, what can I make? It's the chili pepper that's freaking me out. How do you make a chili pepper taste like dessert? Oh, God. Matthew was right. I've never cooked with coffee before, but I think I know the flavor profile and what it matches. I'm making a steak with a coffee, togarashi, and salt dry rub. For my dessert, I'm gonna go to my Filipino roots. So I'm making a champurado. It's a Filipino dish. It's basically a chocolate rice pudding. I feel like I've been losing myself trying to impress the judges with other things that I don't really know. I'm gonna use my cooking style that got me here, and hopefully that will get me into top four. Super crazy. There's so much going on in my head right now. I'm feeling panicked having to do two dishes. I'm cooking off my pork, I'm pressing my tortillas. I've got my pastry cream done. I just need to get it in the blast chiller for about 10 minutes so that it can set. Stop making a mess. This is gonna be the hardest dessert Mary is ever gonna have to make. For my sweet dish, I'm going to make a tomato and plum crumble with a spicy whipped cream. I need to put on a brave face. Matthew is gunning for me. I take it as a compliment. Matthew's an amazing, amazing home cook, and he's my competition, so why won't I be his? Hi there, Veronica. Hello, chef. So these flavors are gonna be big, bold, reflect you, as well as respect the flavors of that mint julep. I'm very confident in my beef tataki and my sweet chawamushi. 
Look, this is done. Ooh, shh. It's over. Yeah, it's overcooked. It's overcooked. This is bad. I can do one more. I can do it again. You can do it again? I can do it one more time. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Seeing Veronica struggle is very, very rare. That time, Mushi, I tried to do it with science. It didn't work for me. There's no time to measure. I just have to trust my gut. There's only 20 minutes left, and I have to pull off the impossible. I got to tell you, in terms of strategy, Matthew has hit two bullseyes. He has put Veronica into extreme pressure, and I've never seen Mary this stressed out. Uh, where's that nutmeg? She is definitely struggling right now. Ooh, sorry, medic. I seldom see her injure herself. The stakes are insanely high. I've never had this much pressure, but the voice in my head is just saying, make sure that these flavors are perfect. Hi there, Jeremy. Hi, Chef. How are your two dishes going? Going pretty good so far. I pretty much got my dessert done. If I were you, I would be thinking about how I could be very creative yeah. to present that, but in a really modern, out-of-the-box thinking. I know, Chef, I know I've been struggling with plating, so that's been what's been going through my head the whole time I've been cooking. As it stands right now, it just looks like brown starch. I know, Chef. I'm kind of nervous. OK, pull the rabbit out of the hat. Good luck with it, Jeremy. Thank you. I'm kind of thinking that I may have made a mistake right now because there's really no way to make my dessert look pretty. working on getting everything done for my coconut tart. You have 10 more minutes left. I look up at the clock and realize right away that my pastry cream has been in the blast freezer for a good 35 to 40 minutes. <gasps> Shoot. My pastry cream is almost completely frozen. April Lee, how are you? Oh, I'm a little frantic. I left my pastry cream in for too long. I've got more of a semi-fredo right now. You are feeling the heat, aren't you? I sure am. <laughs> I've got a feeling about you that you might pull this out. You know what, I got to. I just never give up. And I've made a mistake here, but I'm not going to beat myself up about it. These are beautiful flavors. My texture might not be there yet, but I'm going to do this. I got this. Well, that's what we all love about you. You always <laughs> surprise us. Make sure you surprise yourself. <laughs> Thank you, Chef. Two minutes! It may be your last two minutes in the Master Chef Canada Kitchen. Ooh. Oh, Lord, no, not me. I just grabbed the same two plates. I'm going to be part of the top four because I'm going to try and show the judges that I can plate and make something delicious. I was really disappointed with the dish that I put out earlier, and I want to show them that I can do better than that. So I'm going to redeem myself with this savory dish. I'm not going down today. I'm a fighter, so I'm going to keep fighting until I win. I'm going to show the judges some delicious flavors. I'm going to make them want tomato plum tart every stinking day of their lives. I know my tart is good, but I'm definitely doubting my savory dish. That looks stupid. I, I know the flavor's there. I'm just trying to elevate it with the classic Bloody Mary garnishes. <sighs> oh my god. I love you so much. I can still pull off a dessert and make it look like a beach. I can make the coconut crumble look like sand. Top four. Top four. Changing my life. Ten. Nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hands up. Incredible. Nicely done, everyone. Incredible. That was amazing. Oh, I like pina coladas. The Bloody Mary is delicious, and it's calming my nerves. <gasps> I spent so much time on that dessert. I wish I had more time to plate my beef tataki. That doesn't look like a good plate. I'm pretty worried. I don't love the way my dessert looks. It's turning into a puddle on the plate, and it's not going to look pretty at all. It's now time to taste your dishes. April Lee. <sighs> this is not good enough. I'm just, I'm full of regrets. My savory dish is a rum marinated pork taco with a tropical salsa, finished with a flambéed and rum grilled pineapple slice. And my sweet dish is a pina colada semifredo with a coconut crumble and a rum sauce. What do you think went wrong with this dessert here? I had to come up with another plan and think really quick and think like a chef. It was just tough. Well, let's give this a taste.
Hmm. You know what, Aprilie? It tastes like a really great tropical ice cream. Great, big, punchy flavors. The rum, the coconut, the pineapple, that's all coming through. The only problem is, is that you can't serve a dish like this the way it looks. Don't forget, there's other cooks behind you that may have dishes that look nicer than yours, but the taste may not be there. Pretty decent salsa. Pineapple, beautifully grilled. It just lacks that next step of refinement, layers of flavor. Mary, please bring up your two dishes. So for my savory, I did a Bloody Mary Puttanesca. For the sweet, I did a tomato and plum tart with a spicy creme anglaise. Let's cut to the chase. Matthew assigned you the Bloody Mary mm -hmm. for one reason. He wants me to go home. He wants you out of here, fast. Mm -hmm. This is the Mary we've come to know and respect. This puttanesca, on the other hand, looks like someone's getting lazy. It's delicious. Thank you. Absolutely delicious. Those flavors just shine. The tomato, the spice, I taste a bit of that vodka. It ain't pretty, but <laughs> the taste is there. Thank you. Matthew is really mean, <laughs> giving Mary the Bloody Mary. I know. It's a tricky drink to work with. Hot peppers and tomatoes don't really make sense in dessert, so. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> the tomato, you got the taste that's right, and a bit of the spiciness. The plum, the sweetness to counteract that. The crumble, crispy, dark, sweet, perfect. And of course, a little heat on the custard. This has got to be one of the most innovative and delicious dessert I've tasted for quite a while. Thank you. Matthew expected me to fail, and I did not fail. Veronica, please bring up your dishes. I know I worked hard, but it doesn't matter. None of that matters. It all comes down to the plate. It is a beef tataki with a bourbon ponzu sauce and a zucchini noodle with a mint sauce. And a mint tea chawamushi with a bourbon and sugar syrup. Let's see how it all comes together. It is fresh. The ponzu is there. The bourbon is, is lacking, in my opinion. The mint has a subtlety to it, but the presentation sadly weighs it down. Japanese cuisine has a clean, zen-like approach to it. I can think of 10 ways I could have played it this one better. Shame you didn't pick one of those 10 ways today. You can taste the bourbon and the syrup, of course. Mint cream, not your best. Yeah. I think I would have made it stronger. I would have added a bit more sugar to this. But let me ask you, do you think this is good enough to take you to the top four? Absolutely. I wish I was as confident as you. Maybe I need to rethink how I put a plate together and how all the flavors and textures work together. Jeremy, please bring your dishes up to the podium. This dish is a coffee and togarashi beef with a steak au poivre sauce made with the whiskey and cream. And this dish is a coffee chocolate rice pudding with whiskey candied bacon. I have to say, it doesn't look that appetizing on the plate. Yeah. Surprisingly delicious. Thank you, chef. I'm getting that sweet brown sugar. The coffee is, is working nicely with the chocolate, and it works really, really well with this rice. 
Had you plated it a little bit more elevated, it would have added so much more to the pleasure of enjoyment. Okay. But a bullseye on the use of those three key ingredients. Nicely done. So let's try the beef with coffee sauce. It's delicious, absolutely delicious. Use the coffee to season the beef, right? Yes, uh, dry rub with the togarashi and a lot of salt to counteract the bitterness of the coffee. That was really smart, I'm glad you did that. You know, Jeremy, this dish here, in terms of the presentation, is the best looking main course I've seen in this challenge. Thank you, Chef. I'm so proud of myself. I have a smile from ear to ear. We've tasted all your cocktail-inspired dishes, and now we need a few moments to discuss. Not an easy challenge. Some of them really shone, and there were some that really failed in, in more ways than others. One of them, for me, missed the mark on so many levels. Who do we? Eliminate. Tonight, we ask you to make two MasterChef quality dishes inspired by the classic cocktail that Matthew assigned to you. He wanted everyone to struggle, but in some cases, he missed the mark. Jeremy and Mary, congratulations to both of you. You blew us away with your Bloody Mary tomato and plum tart. And Jeremy, your Irish coffee inspired steak. Thank you. Good job, Mary. <laughs> oh my gosh, they love my dessert. Yeah. I feel like everybody that's still here cooking is gonna be like, maybe I misjudged him. Veronica and April Lee, please come to the front. It sucks. Pretty sinking feeling. I'm not ready to go home, I'm too close. You both had to rethink your desserts and you both showed tremendous tenacity and drive. But neither of you presented dishes that were worthy of the top four. And after taking into account everything on your plate, we have no choice but to send home. April Lee. I'm so sorry. It's okay. You made your family really proud. I know. Veronica, please head back to your station. April Lee, you surprised everyone throughout this competition with your incredible skill and drive. It's been an absolute delight to witness your growth. It's sad to see you go, but there are three prairie men who will be happy to have you back, your husband and your two boys. You've made them very proud. Now come on up and say goodbye. Yeah. Your dish was a knockout. It's an absolute yes. yes. This journey has taught me so much about myself, who I am as a person, who I am as a cook. It's perfect. I've been so inspired. April Lee, you're kidding me so much. What? I'm the sausage queen. <laughs> I made it to the top five. That's something I, I'm so proud of. So, April Lee, looking out there, who do you think is going to become Canada's next Master Chef? My win goes to Matthew. He's such an amazing, amazing home cook, and I'm proud to call him my friend. Thanks, April. this and know that this was something that changed my life. Love you, April Lee. Next time on MasterChef Canada, the top four oh my God. are fueled by their families. <laughs> Even my dad's crying and my dad never cries. They hit the market for some inspiration. Do you have brisket? And cook with their hearts. I want my family to see me win for a spot in the semifinals. Never take this kind of risk normally. I'm gonna win. I'm gonna take it all.